Hey people, what is going on? I am the Broken Puppet and I've got a really fun video for you today. Today we're going to be doing a tiger face and a panther face and it's going to be like a half and half split. So you're going to lying right down the center, it's going to be half one face, half the face. A very cool looking feature. Um, it's really fun to play around. You can do this with like, other kind of animals and other kind of sort of designs. Um, it's just a really cool thing to do. Um, if you didn't have paper like me, it's the basic tools you can use. You've got a ruler. This is basically just marking out. You don't have to have this, but it just makes it a lot easier. A compass, just doing some circles. Um, not necessary, but comes in handy. I'm going to use markers to cut it in. I've got some Windsor and brush markers, a good old trusty rubber, an old crappy pencil, and a gold sharpie. You know, nothing, nothing crazy, just basic tools. So this one I'm going to be using. I'm going to start with the pencil, sketch it all in, and then yeah, go and go from there. So you can kind of see that on the paper. I've already got three lines down here now. Because it's going to be a symmetric design, a kind of face on, I want everything to be nice and even between it. So to give an idea of roughly what I've done, so you've got this line down the center here, line here, line here. Now these ones are both 80 centimeters apart. You can do any kind of sort of length you want. It could be smaller, bigger, you know, I'd try and for this for the video, eight centimeters across here, eight there. It's a very good size. I'm gonna grab my compass to begin with. I'm just gonna bang this in the middle. I'm gonna come here, just gonna get us roughly up to that line. And I'm gonna spin around and just do a very rough circle. Nothing crazy. Get a rough idea there, and I'm going to come down here. I'm going to do a little one just here. I'm not worrying too much about precise measurements, it's just kind of roughly plot it in, like so. I'm only redoing really that with the thing uh, with that because it's a uh, symmetric design. And am come across here, I'm just going to bring a little line across, just so. I mean, you can mark a few more if you want, just to throw out it. And it basically just helps you kind of match up things. I want to do the eyes so you get the eyes at the same level, you know, the ears and stuff. It just kind of makes it match up easier rather than kind of freehanding both sides. You know, with a symmetric design, you don't really want to do too much like that. You know, it just makes it a little bit more difficult and a bit more kind of hard to work that way. But anyways, people's arm waffling here, so we're going to crack on with it now. So we've got this circle here, it's going to be the rough sort of head shape, but here it's kind of going down to that kind of lower jaw area. And then once I've got this, I'm going to sketch in the more sort of structural kind of positions I want everything in. So in this center part here, I'm going to get this rough oval shape. Let's get the skin just roughly in the middle, just like so. That's kind of kind of be where the nose is. I'm going to bring this little kind of box shape just coming down from the side here. And here, roughly to where this line is, just here. Make a little curve across. Have a little one. Just kind of get a circle kind of curving from this bottom. Kind of kind of fair bit out, so a couple of centimeters just past this edge. And I'm going to loop this back around, and that can kind of connect up to the circle bit just there. Similar on this side, it's going to curve there. And this is going to kind of match up there. Don't worry too much about the detail, we're just basically just building up the structure. Now that's the important part of this minute. We've got this oval shape just here. I'm going to bring this kind of X kind of cross dress, like so. Now in this middle bit, we've done this X. We're going to do a little triangle just here, like so. I say little triangle, fair size triangle. To get middle, that's going to be where the nose is going to be. Just bring a tiny little bit line down, and from here, Okay, bring this line across just here and just there. Kind of mimicking the lines done for those bits. And that's going to be where the sort of bottom part of this kind of mouth area is going to be, going into where the gums and the teeth are going to be. So now we've got this done, I'm going to come up here, and where you've got this curved line just above here, I'm going to plot in the eyes. So the eyes are going to be circles to begin with, so I'm going to do a circle here, and I'm going to do a circle here. Now if you want to do a line down here to get an exact same rough position as you can, I'm not too fussed about getting the exact same position because they're not the exact same animal, so both eyes are going to be slightly different. You know, but it does help even getting roughly the same. So if you imagine, just kind of get a rough height where it's about the same and a rough sort of positioning where it's roughly the same. Now we've got it done. I'm going to bring this curve like this. And this curve is going to cut through just the top corner of this eye, this circle. And it's going to flick like that. I'm going to do a thing on the similar on the other side. Now it's going to be very similar to begin with. And then as I start to put the detailing with a pen, I will then refine it and modify them so it's different kind of animals, if that makes sense. So I'm going to bring a little second one just there, second one just there, just kind of get a hint of you know, roughly where I want the eye shape. The top there, I'm going to create this little dip that's going to come down from that circle, and that's going to curve down onto this line, and this line can curve out. I like this ear bit kind of come down roughly, just imagine the bottom part of the eye, across, so it kind of roughly comes to there. I'm going to curve that back, little leaf underneath, nothing too detailed, just to kind of get a rough positioning. I'm just going to mark in the same rough detail on the other side now. So it's going to come across there, come across there, up to there. 
Now, it's very important to do this kind of stage. You know, you need to know where everything goes before you start detailing. You know, very, very important. Now we've got that, I'm gonna bring this curve, this curve kind of loops inwards towards where the, the ear bit is here. And come there, kind of aim towards the eye, you know, the center of the eye. Imagine a little line there, kind of aims towards this point, aim towards that point. And now down here, I'm gonna get this little line, little V-shape just here, little V-shape just there. That's gonna be the first two teeth. You can put these out quite wide if you want, I'll bring them a little bit closer. I'm gonna put them in there. Then when you've got this line here, I'm gonna have one, two, three, four. Or teeth. So there's a tiny little gap between them. You can put another tooth in there, but I always like that little gap. You know, I just personally think it looks quite nice. Down the bottom here, I'm gonna get this curve coming out. So it's gonna be like the V-shape here, but a bit more kind of curved. And this V-shape's gonna come there. Roughly there, and then same here, one, two, three, four. So easy to measure, just do two for one side of that line, and two teeth on the other side of the line. Inside the mouth, it's gonna bring a little curve, just for the tongue, the curve bottom. This can kind of curve inwards. Get in there. So you can see the, the face is slowly coming together now, the sort of structure. And then once we've got this done, we can start putting, putting all the detail bits. So you've got this done now. And I quite like that. So I'm gonna give them a Sharpie. And I'm gonna give them detail with Sharpie. I recommend you do this with a pencil, but when you guys see it nice and clearly from the get go, so it just makes it easier for you guys. Just a reminder people, if you go to tattyspace.com, use my code BROKEN20 and get 20% off on the products. You got my brand new ProCraft brush set up on here. It's Heads and How To, so it's got 30 different animal heads, and each one's got a 12 stage tutorial. So first up here, you get an animal head like this, animal head like this, and you get a 12 stage tutorial showing you exactly how to draw the things, each step of the way, so you know exactly what to do. If you want to support your people, head over there. That's tattoospace.com and that's BROKEN20. So to begin with, I'm gonna get a line, just come down the center, nice and bubbly sharpie. There you go. So that's gonna be my split line. So half the face gonna be one side, half the face gonna be the other side. And that's how I'm gonna kind of measure from there. So I'm gonna start off here, I'm gonna go from the center, so where this nose is, I'm gonna start on this side. So for this one, I'm gonna bring a line out. I'm gonna create a little loop inwards. So it's gonna curve around and a loop. And from this loop, it's gonna curve up and out to the corner. And then from here, rather than going straight across, I'm gonna bring this curve line across and dip to that point just there. Now from here, I'm gonna create another line. It's gonna go a bit the same again, just a little bit lower. So you've got one line, two line, three line. So this one's got the nostril and this is the top. It just gives a bit of sense of 3D freediness to the nose. So I guess this is like the top part and that's kind of like the under part. And now we've got it done, I'm gonna come across. I think I'm gonna get the other side part, the uh, cheek just done here. So I'm gonna start off with getting this curve. So it's gonna curve outwards curve like so. So it's going to curve around like this. This one's going to curve inwards. And finally this one's going to curve inwards. And when I get to this end I'm going to curve it up a touch just there. So you see you've got this one cheek on this side. And the other one I'm going to do slightly different. I'm going to kind of do in reverse. You know because it's two different animals. I mean you can do the same. Both animals can be done the same that way. But this one I'm going to be slightly different. So this one I'm going to do the nose and this one's going to be slightly different. Only slightly low. So I'm going to bring this line out, and rather than doing a loop, this one, I'm going to curve up, down, and I'm going to curve up and out. From here, I'm going to create this curve um, up, and it's going to kind of loop down to that point. This one's going to come up a little bit higher this time, like so. So you see, very similar kind of nose, but different at the same time. I'm going to come here, the same kind of angle for this bottom part, but as where these loops kind of went this way, this one's going to kind of curve the other way this time. Curve that around, curve that around, curve that around, and curve that there. So you can see, very similar to the other side, but again, same difference. And don't worry about the height, the height is supposed to be different, it's a different kind of shape. I always like to have the pan for a bit more kind of curved, and my sort of tigers, a bit more kind of sort of square and narrow. Now it doesn't have to be that way, like see, you know, I say a million times it doesn't have to be that way, because it really doesn't, it's just the way I do it. So I'm going to create this little bit above the nose now. So for this one, I'm going to create one little line. I'm going to create another little line. Just here. Coming up here. I'm going to leave a little gap because I want this kind of loop to come around. So I'm going to do a quick little loop while I'm at this point. Just in there like so. I'm going to get this one as well. So I'm going to bring this loop. Just so I kind of have that in there to kind of work off for this part of the nose. This one's going to be much more dramatic. So it's going to curve. Once, twice, and 
come as if it was going a third time. Let's see, very much more kind of aggressive, kind of aiming inwards, which is what I want. And I'm going to create this curve line coming out here now for this eye. So it's going to curve there. And then I'm not even going to get the circle for the eye. Just like so. I'm going to be a bit similar on this side, so I'm going to have this curve line coming out to a point. Go to there. So you've got one eye, two eye. Now this time I'm going to bring this line outwards. And it's going to cover up and join to that point just there. This one's going to be ever so slightly different. Curve. This one's going to come up, come like that. I'm going to bring it to a stop there because once today I'm going to get some kind of like I'm thinking kind of fur texture kind of coming around it. So it's clear those two points there. So now I've got this done. Where should I go to next? Yeah, let's go down to the teeth. So I'm going to get his teeth in there. Just kind of what we just put initially. Just there, just there. One tooth, two tooth, three tooth, four tooth, and then just kind of connect up a little line, just there. Now, that's a fair bit of gum on here, you don't have to have that much. You know, like the more kind of aggressive that I want it to be, the more I kind of sort of show the gum. If it's a bit more friendly, I kind of put it up. You don't have to have any gum at all, you can kind of go from underneath here as well. You know, it's just an alternative way to do things. Let's say I've got a top tooth there, I'm going to split. I'm going to get the whiskers. I haven't marked in the whiskers, but I'm going to show you roughly what I'm doing. So you can have as many as you want, you can have five, four, three. I recommend having at least three. Um, and let's say probably maximum of sort of five or six. You don't want to get any more than that. So I'm going to get one line coming here, one line there, one line there, and one line there. These two are going to be shorter, these two are going to be longer. On this side, I'm going to do line here, line here, line here, line there. So very similar kind of positions. I'm going to need both of them quite differently now. So this one I'm going to make quite wiggly. So I'm going to create this wiggle line coming down. And it's going to end with a flick coming, coming upwards. Now I always generally prefer it to kind of come to that kind of direction rather than the other way. So it's going to come there. That's going to come there. That's going to come there. It's gonna go there. So see, you've got these nice kind of wiggly kind of whiskers. And this side I'm gonna do it, but I'm gonna do this one's fairly straight. Now there's no right or wrong way when it comes to panther and tigers. I mean, these wiggly ones look good on the tiger, the straight ones look good on the panther. You can just do straight lines if you want. You know, the whiskers are just really customizable and they work for both animals. So what's they generally work for any kind of cat animal, really. So if you're doing like a cheetah, you're doing a um, lion, anything like that. You know, it generally works for all of them. So the same thing, but you can see straight on that side. And remember, if you like these, I've got these on my Procreate brush sets as well. You've got my heads and how-tos. It's a really fun set with uh, Tattoo Space. Um, if you haven't heard me mention it before, I've probably mentioned it before, you know, it's... But yeah, if you want to kind of support me and stuff and you kind of like it, there's 30 brushes on there with heads like this. And then there's 30 tutorials as well. You have a 12 stage step showing you exactly how to draw every single one of them. So if you like these and you just kind of want this tutorial really handy, you know, it's really great for that. Um, but if not, you guys got my tutorials as well. You know, it's always handy from both ways. But yeah, just give you guys more resources and more tools to work with. So I'm going to come down now, and I've got that. I'm going to use bottom teeth just in here. So I'm going to get a fang just in there. Fang just in there. One tooth. Two tooth. Three tooth. Four tooth. And the teeth can literally just be circles like that. They ain't got to go too complicated with them. Now I'm going to get this little bit around the bottom, so I'm going to create this curve line here. It's going to curve up. Curve down to the fang. Now I'm going to have this very similar on both sides. It's going to curve outwards. It's going to curve in here, so it's going to go a little bit behind this fang. It doesn't have to, but I want it to, and it's going to curve out to there. And a secondary line, just get it. So you basically want this little kind of tunnel line. So two lines kind of get symmetric with each other. So very similar on both sides here. quite like I know this one's kind of a bit the same because they're going to be different colours so you kind of get this like symmetry of different sort of colours which is really cool so again it just kind of makes them similar but not the same I'm going to get this tongue here so it's going to loop around get down to a little point just there get this around 
of this up to these tooth podges too. Now depending on how big the mouth is, you might have a little bit of gap here, kind of a bit of mouth behind it. You know, it might connect up to the top like it did there. But uh, yeah, it's just kind of how you want to play around with it. I'm going to get a few little inline mouth details. I'm going to get a line just curving like this. Just a uh, heavy little line just there. Uh, just there. Uh, nothing too crazy, just quite simple, straight to the point. So now I've got this, I'm going to come up to a bit more kind of refined detail. So around this eye just up here. Similar to how we've done that mouth, I'm going to get a secondary line that mimics around this. Just like so. Remember, I'm going fairly fast, just take your time. And I don't feel like you have to go as fast as me. You know, I would normally go starting this, so I thought I was drawing this to look quite normally, but um, obviously, you know, I've done this video to be like, you know, like two hours long, so I'm just, just kind of speeding up a little bit. So, yeah, don't kind of feel like this is the speed I would say normally go at. I know I'm fast, but I'm not always this fast. So I'm just getting that line just down there. Comes out to where that ear is. And I'm gonna create this curve around here. Let's get a couple of wiggly lines just inside that ear bit, just for a little bit of detail. Not necessary, but I quite like to do that. So now I'm gonna decide, and this side's gonna be fairly similar, but again, a little bit different. So I'm gonna bring this line initially outwards. But I want this one to be a bit more hairy, so I'm gonna go line, 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 line. So we get there. So you see, kind of following that kind of rotation. Now when we get here, I'm gonna create this curve like this. It's gonna create this line, and then here we're gonna go line, 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 line. Take your time, get these nice and symmetric. And you basically wanna slowly start rotating them as you go further up. Like so. So you've got this nice kind of bit around the outside. And the works really good because you've got a pan fold, which is nice and smooth and you've got a tie which is nice and hairy. So yeah, it just makes a nice little set. Similar to here, I'm just going to use little lines on the outside. I'm bring this curve line just here. Just to kind of, I'm going to stop at that point now, I'm going to go right into those lines. And then again, I'm going to bring this curve up. Go up to the top like so. So you see, we've got this nice kind of sort of like panther tiger face going now. It's kind of getting there to the point where we want it. Now the eyes, you can even do dots, you can do, um, you know, uh, sort of cat's eyes. You know, it's really kind of up to you how you kind of want to do the eye textures. Um, for this one, I think I'm just going to go a little dot, little dot, and I might get a fine line after a while. I might do like a little line around them. Sometimes I like doing a little line around the pupil. It just looks cool. But maybe a little bit bolder. There you go, I like that. So now I've got it done, like I said, I want to add the fur texture around here. I hadn't quite decided where I kind of wanted it. But um, I'm going to go... Like so a little bit there. A little bit of line just there. And that'll do it for the fur texture. I ain't got to go too crazy with the fur. Now you've got to remember, you've got a slight difference in the inside. Now you can add sort of like muscle kind of details if you want, inside the face just here. Which do look pretty good. You can leave it smooth as well. That's perfectly fine. I think for this one I'm going to leave it a bit smooth. Bringing this line a little bit just like that, just to kind of sort of change the shape up. So you see, as you're going to get the stage, you're sort of making it a bit more kind of custom on both sides. So now we've got this done, I'm going to add this tiger straps on this side. Now you can kind of play around with these, you know, there's no real wrong or right way to do these, you know, just kind of play around and have fun. Now you'll start doing it, you know, every now and again you'll just do like a stroke for it. Oh yeah, I really like how I've done that. And that'll kind of come like your kind of go to way of doing it. So just gonna add one, two, three on top of the head just there. Make sure we get a couple come down the ear. A lot of times people kind of forget to do the ears. And it's very important, it just doesn't look right, it doesn't have at least a couple down the ears really. So now we've got that done just there. I'm gonna bring down the side part down the cheek just here. I'm gonna do what I quite like to do down here, I'm gonna bring this line. It's about here. I'm gonna do another line, I'm gonna create a little bump. Just like so. And then lastly, one little one just there. Now it's gonna make sense, these are gonna be tiger stripes, but I'm gonna do this nice cool fade in them, which I would love to do. And I'm gonna show you guys that there in a sec. And uh, don't forget one just on the chin as well, so I'm gonna get one there. And then I'll add a second one just there. So yeah, I really like that. So now we've got that done, I'm just gonna grab a mirror. And we can just rub it out. Now just remember, if you're doing this on certain kind of papers, you might wanna let your pen dry. Sharpie tends to dry fairly quick. So I can rub this out. 
and a farming rabbit today. I think I was sitting on it last time, I think it was on my chair. So when I couldn't find it, I was looking around everywhere. Yeah, it was with me the whole time. Yeah, it never left me. Ah! Dave's gone all over the place. Ah, Dave, let me straighten this up, touch. <laughs> So yeah, we've got our face in here now, so we've got one side, we've got the other side. So now we've got it done, I'm going to add some texture and colour into here. So I'm going to grab my pens. I'm going to start off, like I said, I'm using my brush markers. These are ones that are in and brush markers. You can use Copics, Comedian pens, pencils, whatever you want. There's no kind of right or, right or wrong way. They're all fun to use. So I've got these. I've also got a Pro Marker. Brush markers for blending, Pro Markers for bold colour. You know, pro markers, that's the only kind of real use from we there. And I'm not, I'm not really a fan of pro markers, unless I'm just colouring bold areas. So I'm going to start off with just colouring a few bold black areas. So obviously I'm going to colour in these stripes up here, because they are just bold black. Just like so. Just there. The handy thing with these kind of areas as well, and that's where it's bold black, if there's any inconsistency or a part of your line that isn't smooth, you can always just kind of gut over it because where the area on the inside is black, you wouldn't really notice there's any difference. Now it's a, it's a handy little tool for covering up anything you're not really proud of. Does anybody you want to get rid of? That's how you do it. Now this inside line here around the lip, I'm going to put a bit of black just here. A bit of black just here. A bit of black just there, nothing too crazy. And then I'm gonna go back on the inside part of the mouth there, a little bit of black just here, a bit of black just there. Now while it's still nice and fresh, I'm then gonna hit this with my shade, so I'm gonna come in here with my greys. There's my darkest grey, there's my light. There we go. So I've got my warm brush mark, uh, my warm set here, so you got uh, the warm grey five to the warm grey one. Um, you don't necessarily have to use all of them. If you know my videos, you generally realise that I tend to skip a few of the colours. You know, if you're going oh, if you go like five to darkest, so if you go five and then you go to the next edge with black, you know, uh, sorry, the next one being four, three, two, one, you get like a really nice blend. And you basically want to go side to side over the top. Just go over a few times. You know, make sure it's good quality paper. This is up like Windsor brush marker paper. Uh, sorry, this is um, Bristol board rather. Um, it's good quality paper. You know, if you're using obviously like printer paper, it will bleed through. Now, so if you're using something like, you know, your sort of basic paper, then maybe use normal kind of paper. Then that'd be your best bet. Oh, sorry, um, if you're using normal paper, use pencils, rather. Sorry, I get my, all my equipment messed up right now. I'll give you guys the complete wrong advice. But yeah, just go it a few times, and it'll blend. Give it enough time to sink in, because you've got to remember, it's wet, so the blend won't happen initially, straight away. So make sure you give it enough time. Not long, the brush markers are fairly quick, you know, but just, yeah, give it enough time to do what it's supposed to do. So this one is black. So I'm going to get a few little areas, so just here in the gummer section, just here. So get a little strip of black just across that top. And then, yeah, just going through the markers, just like we've done before, so I'm going to get a grey. And side to side is always your best bet, you get much cleaner, even shade doing side to side over the top. If you're flicking down, it's going to be a bit inconsistent. So try to keep everything nice and side to side. That's the easy way down. Come on now. So you've got a nice little fade out just on that part of the mouth. You can do this for other parts of the mouth, which I probably will do now actually. So I'm just going to get a little bit under the tongue. A little bit between the teeth, just there. And just this side of the mouth is well coming down like I've done the other side. Just there. And you want to work fairly quickly with markers, you don't want to hang around. If you leave it too long, the marker will dry. You know, um, the alcohol base, it will last a little bit. You know, but the fact is they won't last forever. So if you're not quick enough, they will dry. And once they dry, it will be a bit kind of hard to blend out. Similar to how water paints and stuff work, you know, you, you just can't really hang around, you know, that they're, they're forgiving if you get to them quick enough. You know, if you leave them there, they're going to get impatient and they're going to refuse to do what they're supposed to do. 
yeah, that does get annoying, I know it does. I mean, it annoys me, so it must annoy anyone else. That's my logic. So get a little bit of bulk grade stuff in that centre part of the tongue. A little bit of grade behind it. Remember there's also going to be a bit of transitioning and blending when you put the colour over the top. So if the line isn't actually perfect smooth, don't worry, because chances are the colour will end up doing that when you get to it. Now it's also, it's also important to remember the colour will also blend and change it as well. Sorry, a little bit of was bugging me. So now we've got this done. So I'll, go, I'll do those stripes I told you about so we kind of get that done. So I'm going to get a little bit of black just here behind the whiskers. Just ever so slightly. And then where we've got that line we've done, I'm going to put some black on it, just bolding it up. How bold you want to go, it's up to you. It depends how close you are today. You don't want the blacks to get too close. But you want a colour transition in the middle of it. So I'm going to put those in there. And then, yeah, just going like we've done. But I'm going to fade in this direction only. And then only off this little part just here. Let's go the other way. I want the shading to be very short, so I don't want to bring it out too much. So when you're going over the edge, only go over the edge a little bit each time with the colours. Now with your shades. If you go too much, it just kind of looks a bit... It just blends in too much together, you know. You want a little bit of spacing. You know, very short, very to the point with this. So you see, I'm just going to go from like the four to the one on the greys because I don't want to extend it out too much. And also because I know the colour is going to do a fair bit of the transitioning with the colour, you know, with the uh, blending. So that's in there. So you can get this really cool talking about sort of tiger stripe coming in. You know, I sometimes do it in the others, but it's, to be honest, it's mainly just here I do it. I don't really tend to do it too much in the other spaces. With my pens around. I'm gonna be a little bit black just here. I think a little bit black just here, maybe just coming up. Nothing too crazy. And I might have some black just coming around. Connecting up onto the eye just here. Yeah, like that. So yeah, I'm just going to keep putting those greys, just blending this out. Now, I mean, you can do this with colours, but you know, when it's sort of drawing, I tend to always put the greys down first. It just kind of makes it easier. And then lastly on the tiger effect, well, I don't know if it's last year or not, but... Um, a little bit of black. Just across the, top, across the top part of the head, just there. Again, I want this to be very kind of short shading. You just kind of get a sense of curvature to the top head, which is what I really want. I don't want to do it too much, just enough to kind of get that sense as it turns. You now, when it comes to old school, a lot of time it is literally that it's just to kind of give it a sense of curvature rather than anything else. So, if you see like old school kind of pin ups or bodies or faces, now the shading is usually very short around the edges, which is generally the whole point of it. You know, it's to achieve that certain style of look, and then it's very, very good at achieving that kind of look. So now we've done that, what am I missing? Uh, the nose. Yeah, so I'm going to go black on this side and pink on this side. Which is going to make a really nice sort of um, transitional kind of look because obviously this is going to be black skin and this is going to be light skin. So it's kind of like polar opposite, it's kind of yin and yang. And that will come now. And a bit of black from the top, so I'm moving this last little highlight just across this middle part. But it's going to go blend to the edge. Now, most of it I won't go to the edge, but for this nose, I will kind of go to the edge. Now, nine times out of ten, I will usually leave a little highlight there. But today is not the day. So now I've got that done. There's going to be a few other little bits, but this is generally the gist of um, the black we're going to use on this side. So I'm going to get the black done on this side. Now, the black's going to be much heavier on this side. 
And that's, I'm going to start off with a few areas. I'm going to start off around here. So you can see I'm going to bring this around the whiskers. And you can already see I'm bringing this black out a bit further than what I did on the other side. It's going to come down here. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring this out to the edge just here. Now you can really bring this as far across as you want. You know, it really depends on how kind of sort of dark you want the face. I'm leaving this kind of little highlight area and then I'm going to use this to blend out now so you're going to see. It's all part of the plan. I want to try and get a really nice kind of sort of smooth transition here as well. So your best practice is probably doing one side at a time rather than doing both. So I said, because we've got work pretty quickly. If you're doing both sides, you might find that one side dries by the time you get to, you know, get around to doing it but you know I me mean, I use markers ahead of a lot so I can go fairly quick at this so I'm now going from the five transition into the four it's probably one of the few areas where I might go through most of the gray shades so I can really achieve that nice gradient and just remember to overlap a little bit each time you do it you know you kind of want to go over the initial one and that's how you kind of blend in it. You know, if you're not overlapping, you're gonna have a hard time blending. Come down to the two now. It's the first time I've used the two on this one. You find these markers, you tend to get either the warm set or the cold set. Um, the cold set just kind of has a little, slight bit more of a bluey kind of tint. You know, the warm just has a little bit more of a kind of warmth to it. You know, both look really cool and there's no right or wrong way to use them as well just kind of play around to see which ones you kind of like so there we go so you see it gets a nice kind of blend as it transitions into the middle you now I really like that I'm gonna get a similar effect on the bottom here I'm gonna bring this black around quite heavily remember to keep that sort of edge nice and smooth it's gonna make it much easier to shade it so I'm going to quite heavy kind of around the bottom part just there, like that. And then again, I'm going to come through the greys now. And I'm going to fade this downwards. You can put a little highlight in the center if you want. But for the bottom of the chin, I always like to see gray either going down or going up. You know, so either sort of pure black at the bottom and kind of fading up towards the mouth or the other way around. Now that's literally just personal preference, you know, it's not a right or wrong. You know, it's the thing I love about, you know, Panthers is, you know, like, although they're kind of similar and kind of done, there's just so many variations. And they all change it so dramatically. And I think Panther's like one of my favorite things to draw. I just, I don't know, can never get bored of an old school Panther. So see here, you've got this nice transition coming down now. And now generally, if I do this at the bottom, like this, I would normally have black coming down from the top to kind of counteract it and kind of sort of like tell the same kind of direction. Um, if I was to do it from the bottom, sometimes I would have it coming down from the top as well, but sometimes I might go around the other way. But generally if I have this from the bottom, it's not often I'll kind of go from black to fade out. But that makes sense, it's usually black from here, kind of coming down this way. That's just generally how I would normally do it. So I'm going to start off here, so I'm going to get this black, it's going to curve in the middle of this upper eye part. I'm going to fade this out like so. Here, bring this line across like this. Now, you may want to do this a little bit by bit because I said you know it's quite a wide area and you don't want your inks to dry or your pens to dry up by the time you get to the other side of it. But I'm going to work fairly quick here. So, I've got that bold bit of black in there now. Again, I'm just going to go around the edge. Just get a nice fade. I'm, on this part of the eye here, I'm just going to fade inside outwards. So I want a nice hard black edge. I don't want to lose that. So that's going to go there. That's my number two. So here, I don't want to lose this edge just around here. I don't want to lose that. That's very, very important. Now 
I just, I just kind of feel like you tend to lose a lot of personality if you don't have that line. You know, so yeah, I don't know. It's just it's a very it's a very very important line to have, in my opinion. Bring this back now, just come down from that top, come down to this ear. Then we get to this ear, I'm gonna kinda of like flick this out a bit. We come to there. Get this little bit of black just around this bottom part of this eye. I'm gonna have this kind of fade in this area now. Bring this right down, just going like side to side over the edge of all the black I've done. You know, it's very important to kind of work that into your kind of mind, you know, the side to side motion. It just makes it so much easier to blend markers. You know, you have a much harder time blending markers if you're not doing that. So yeah, just kind of religiously trying to get that into your head. And then make your life much easier with them. Obviously using pencils, you just blend like normal and stuff, you know. Kind of feel like you're stuck into it. So you see, you got this nice kind of shine across this bit, across here, through here, and under here. Now you can just back in this area if you want as well. This area can be pure black. It's the only area I'll say that is okay to be pure black. You know, anywhere else you kind of want to fade in some sort of direction. So you like fade, fading completely inwards, fading completely outwards. You know, this is the only area I say you can probably have solid and look right. So now with that done, I'm gonna go for me, where's my number three? Number three. I'm gonna flip this kind of on the inside part just here. Inside part just here. Inside part just there. There. I'm gonna go same on this side, just obviously up the other way now. And I don't want no black in this bit, I don't want it to be too dark on the inside part of this face. So yeah, just flick them with the grey tones. But he's like, this kind of part of the face is probably the one time you just don't really want to use that black tone. It just won't look right, in my opinion. A little bit here, just on the inside part of the nose. Again, just flick that out. And then lastly, I've got a little bit of black just above this part. So just here. So I'm going to mimic that kind of shape of this kind of curve in each one of these. Just there, and then again, we just need to kind of blend out those edges. I mean, you kind of have a hard edge, you know, like that if you want, you know, which does look pretty cool, you know. But I always like to put just a little bit of a fade on there at least, you know, it just kind of gives a much cleaner finish. And I know I just prefer a cleaner finish to be honest, but yeah, just my personal opinion. So, you see, we've got one side done now, you got the other side done. And now we're done, I think we are ready for some color. After I do the little dots in the face, because it's normally not fun to do them. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Get the smaller each time you come inwards. You can do these as proper circles as well if you want. But um, yeah, just an important part of the face. It just feels a little bit bare about it. So there we go. So that's them done now. So now we're gonna done. I'm gonna have for colours. So I'm thinking I'm gonna use a yellow, a couple of yellows. So I'm gonna use this one, um, which is um, sunflower, amber, bright orange. I got me berry red. That's my fire brick, I think. Yeah, fire brick. Uh, I don't know if I use this one or not. I might do. I might go to the henna. Uh, I might use blue. I've got um, 
cool locker I think I might use. I might not use some of these, I haven't decided yet. These are kind of ones I'm sort of thinking I am going to work with. And yeah, I think that'll probably do it. So these are the colours I think I'm going to go for. So I'm going to start off with uh, probably the fire brick, I think. I'll start with a darker colour and go down. I find it easier to blend. So I'm going to start off with the tiger face. So I'm going to start off with the stripe just here. So I'm going to go a little bit of this stripe. And just like we've done the grey shade, I'm going to keep this very, very short. I don't want to drag the colour out too far. You know, so basically this fire brick is probably going to still be within the grey shading. It probably won't venture outside it. So we're going to go fire brick, and it's going to go into the bright orange. I mean, you can use a more muted tone if you want, but um, yeah, I don't know. I quite like my tigers nice and bright orange. It's just how I like mine. And the exact same principles we've done the grey shade and so I'm just going to go side to side just over the top. So yeah, just kind of keep going over the edge. Now I've got that done, that's going to go down into the amber. And again, remember to work over the colour. Now, although I like to use the, um, the orange, you'll probably find the main colour I'm going to use for most of the tiger. Uh, and usually the colour I most use for most of it is the amber. You know, I kind of think of the amber as the base colour tone and the reds are for brightening up and making parts stronger. But the main base bulb colour is usually the amber. And you generally find that for most time you see tigers, you know, yellow, the yellow is usually the dominant colour. You know, unless you're going for a bit more of um, a kind of burnout kind of look. You know, which is pretty cool. But uh, yeah, unless you got muted tones, you'll generally find a colour like the amber is usually the dominant colour. You can't really go wrong with it. So yeah, she's using a sunflower just over the edges just there. That's a side bit done. I'm gonna come up here now. Firebrick on this bit. Firebrick for a fair bit of this. So yeah, I'm pretty much using these like the grey shades. So it will, it will generally go firebrick, orange, amber, sunflower. So you're basically just going through the kind of lighter tones from the dark. And yeah, as long as you kind of keep that going, you can't really go wrong to be honest. Yellow just there. Just here. Bring this across this top. Bring that orange across the bits. Where you got those lines, I'm not going to come on the inside of these bits. Where you generally have those lines, I want to have sort of like either greys or blues. I don't want to have yellows on the inside. And then that yellow. Um, a bit of fire bricks on this bottom now. And when we've done any side strokes, you can get a bit of fade just across here. Um, I'm probably not going to go out quite like that kind of hard edge look on that section. I probably have like even the greys or the blues kind of fading outwards from it. Not too sure I want about you. I'll see in a sec, you know, because we'll be getting on to that in a second. So 
the orange into the amber. Make sure you leave yourself enough room to put some of the um, greys and blues down here. Don't take this yellow out too far. So you're gonna bring it out and shorten it just there. You don't wanna go too far with that. So yeah, so now we've got that done. I'm gonna come here now, so should we go for... Yeah, let's go for some basic kind of red areas. Kind of know we want. So I've got my berry red here. And I want that inside the eye just there. I'm going to put in all the areas that I know I kind of want this. So inside the eye bits, just there. I know I want that. Inside this mouth area, I know I want it there. So just bring this all over that tongue. You can even look like a white edge on the tongue if you want. Um, I'm making this quite a nice and bold so it really kind of pops. I'm going to flick this red down here, but this is going to transition to a nice kind of purpley tone. So I want the purple around the gums areas. So just kind of like a lilac -y kind of tone. Let me see what I've got that kind of works. Da -da. It's a bit strong. Uh, oh, I can't find a micro one. I'm going to show you an easy way of doing this. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go red to begin with. Trust me. This is a good thing about markers, which a lot of people don't seem to realize. You can make your own colors up. And you find some amazing colors doing this. Um, especially greens. You can make some lovely greens with the blues and the uh, yellows. But this one, I'm on a kind of a purpley tone, so I'm gonna go for red to begin with. Da -da 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 -da. And now we've got it done, where's that called? Aqua. Just gonna go over the edge with the cool aqua. I'm just putting in the first dose quite quickly. You know, you're not gonna get too much transition, but it kinda like, I don't know, it sounds kinda weird, but it kinda like primes it in my opinion. But then once I've done that, I'm gonna come in with a slight other one. I've got a china blue here. And this will make a nice color transition. And there we go. I basically just wanted a purple that wasn't too strong. Now I have got one around here somewhere, but the one I was gonna use I just can't find and I'm not. I'm gonna spend the next 10 minutes looking for it where you guys just wait, so. We adapt, we survive. So yeah, purple in those areas now. I'm dropping me amber. Ugh, there. Great. Ugh, chair sliding. I'm going back. I'm here. Sorry, my chair's starting to roll a little bit though. Right, so I'm going to put the last bit of the uh, fabric and the yellow stuff now. So I'm going to go a bit here in the sun sun mouth, just on this side. Okay, not on the tiger side. A little bit here, just find the eye. And this is going to go into the amber. I'm going to actually, um, where's that brown tone I have? Do I like? Is that too dark? No, that do. This is going to cocoa. The cocoa will flick outwards. Like so. This will go into the amber tone. I think I'm going to create an amber tone throughout the mouth. And these kind of ones I tend to like it to be more this kind of strong amber tone rather than um, the sort of golds. Uh, the yellows rather. Sorry, but I get a couple of my colours mixed up sometimes. Sometimes it's because I say the uh, the tattoo inks that I use rather than the actual name of the uh, pens. Um, just force a habit, you know, I deal with pens, paints, and markers all day long, so sometimes I get the names confused. But yeah, any names you're not too sure about, you know, just drop me a message on here, just say, what was that one you said, and I'll correct myself. But yeah, I kind of just draw these as a go. I'm gonna use a little bit of pink here, just kind of fade out this edge. So I don't want it too strong, just as it approaches this part here. Nothing crazy though, just kind of like blend out that edge, just a touch, just a smidgen. And then, 
gonna come here pink on this part of the nose then I've got a nice strong red dollar pink I'm gonna go for this and then I'm gonna go grey over the top I think so let's put a bit of kind of stronger tone in there and then just using my grey tone or number two very quickly go over the edge. Now just ever so slightly darken that tone to where we want it. So now with that done, I'm going to come in with the blues. So I'm thinking, yeah, should we try on a blue go? Let's go try on a blue go as well. So that's the one I'm going to use. Actually, I'm going to use mint green for the eyes. Um, I love this colour for eyes. And this one's quite handy because this is the same name as the uh, one of my favorite tattoo colors. So I generally use the Eternal Mint Green a lot, which I love. So it's handy when the names kind of match and the colors are very similar. So put that in there. Bit of red just in there. In the so I come back, I might have maybe put like a, a bit of spikes. I was thinking about bringing the pattern around here, but no, I quite like it like that. So now I'm going to come in with the greys and the blues. So I'm probably going to come with the blues first, and then if they're a bit too strong, just kind of hit them with the um, the grey tone after. It's just to kind of like blend them down a touch. So I'm going to flick this initially in here on this curve. A little bit just there. A little bit just kind of over the edge of the fur texture just there. And then using the lighter blue. Just gonna go over the edge. And just a little bit around the edge as well, just kind of blend it out. And I don't want a hard edge with the blue. Be careful about you and using this one your average low because you don't want to turn your yellows uh, green. You know, we just kind of look a bit sort of this colour, so I just try not to hit it that too strong. Yeah, quite like that. So I'm going to come down now and just kind of put this over a little bit of this part in the centre. Nothing crazy. Again, just over here. A bit darker than I normally go, but it still looks pretty cool. I like it. And don't be afraid to experiment, sometimes go a bit darker if you want to. Let go through there. It kind of looks up with the grey, so I might use a bit of the grey on the other parts as well. Here. So again, a bit blue just around here. A bit of blue again just on this part. working it in so it kind of fades a bit. Just like that. I quite like how it looks but I think I'm just going to dull it down ever so slightly so I'm going to come in with me one grey number two to begin with. Just gently kind of flick this over the top. But yeah if it kind of is a bit too strong you kind of want to dull it down a bit you know a little bit of grey does the trick for that. Put this throughout the other parts as well, so it matches up. So yeah, I liked it, but it was just a little bit too intense for what I kind of wanted this purpose to be. 
I'm gonna come in with a mint green here. I'm gonna flick this up through the whiskers, coming from the end. Lastly, I'm going to get grey number three. And I'm just going to flick down a little bit of grey, just down the centre of the tooth. And just come in with number one and just blend that out a touch. I'm not going to do it on the little teeth, just on these ones. I mean, you can make this be kind of vicious as well and add like, a little bit of blood of sank on the uh, teeth if you want, but. Um, I prefer not to do that sometimes. You know, just stick with the animals kind of as they are. So there we have it. Well, that is how you draw a half pamper, half tiger face. Remember, if you like this, make sure to check out my brush set. You know, it's a Procreate. You know, this is traditional, but it's really good. You've got 30 brush brushes on there for animal faces from different kind of angles. You've got 30 uh, tutorials. Where it's that like 12 stages, like this kind of showing you exactly how to draw it. It's really that simple. You just go click and boom, you have a whole tutorial right in front of you, you can go over. And you can use that a million times a day. You know, it's just like a case. It's kind of like the evolution of the old kind of tattoo flash books. It's really cool. And you can play around with this. You can have rabbit animals. You can do sort of tiger, panther. You can do panther, tiger. You can do panther, lion. You can do lion, leopard. You can do lion, bear, tiger, bear. You know, like you can really play around with this idea. Now you know, to split down the sun and down the middle. It's a really fun way of doing things. You can actually get like a flower on the outside here if you wanted to. Flower down here. You now there's tons extra you can do for these things. You know, but yeah, this one's kind of sort of tiger and a panther face. I hope you like it, people. I'm Deep Broken Puppet, and I'll see you next time. Peace.